In this series of videos, I'd like to give a brief overview of how I do tracking of the full workflow from recording, taking input footage with a scene, tracking the camera, exporting that camera and scene data to Houdini, and modeling a three-dimensional object and adding it back into that scene. Um, for this workflow, I'm going to be using numerous pieces of software. Um, the main one will be DaVinci Resolve where we will use the, the camera tracker um, and just the video editing and compositing that's available inside of Fusion within Re DaVinci Resolve 16. Um, I'm also going to use Mocha Pro um, to help out with some of the masking and tracking. It's not necessary to use Mocha Pro. Uh, the tracker in Fusion is not bad, um, but I'm kind of used to Mocha Pro, so I won't be using it in this tutorial. Um, as I said, I will use the camera tracker that's in DaVinci Fusion and we use Houdini itself, I use the Indie version, to import this tracked model along with the camera and add a three-dimensional object with some lighting, shadows, that kind of thing. And we'll render that out to some files and we'll use Fusion to pull it all back together within Resolve to have a final video, which you can see here that's been playing over uh, my talking here. Um, I've broken this into a bunch of parts. I recorded the footage. It's got about an hour's worth of video. So the first part today, this video, I'm going to cover setting things up inside of DaVinci Resolve, importing the footage, and going through the footage to kind of analyze what it is we're going to cover. To begin with, I'm going to create a fresh project within DaVinci Resolve. Give it a name, and then open this up. One of the first things we want to do is check the settings for the project. Um, these are things that tend to be best if you set them before starting. So our timeline resolution in this case is 1920 by 1080. I know this to be the case because my primary footage is 1080p. Um, it's also recorded at 24 frames per second, and I want to play it back at 24 frames per second. Um, the only other thing that really matters in here is for color management. The default mode is what's called DaVinci YRGB, and this works fairly well. It basically, if what you're working on is intended to be entirely for video, meaning we're going to be publishing this to YouTube, it probably is okay to stay in this color space. The Rec. 709 similar enough to our sRGB. This is the color space defined for HD video. DaVinci also has this mode called Managed Color Mode, where we can set all of these separately. The biggest difference here is that the footage is given inside of Fusion within Resolve will entirely be done in a linear color space instead of one of these gamma corrected. I tend to use this because, well, there's kind of a trend to use linear color management within Fusion and any kind of compositing. It doesn't really matter much for this particular workflow. I will have to do one extra step to work in linear, but I like to set it at linear just to get used to that, and it makes certain color and blending operations correct when done inside of Fusion. So we have one set of footage in our project, and this is a series of ping files. 777 of them. I've already navigated to the directory. And if we pull this footage in and just kind of scrub through it, we can see that's a handheld camera of the corner of my office with some computers here and Jimmy doing almost nothing in the corner. So a couple things to point out about this footage. It's important for these frame numbers to start with zero. When I first extracted this video clip, these numbers started at like 300 something because I had removed some from the beginning. And this turns out to be a real problem when going through the whole workflow through Houdini, which is expecting the frame numbers of these to match the ones in the animation. So I did a little bit of scripting and renamed all of these to 0 through 776.ping. Within Resolve, it's possible to also work with a movie, a QuickTime movie file or an MP4, some other type that is a single file. I'm not sure what's best. This seems to play okay from ping files. Um, 
I've generally found random access works better with the individual files. Playing it linearly works better with the movie encoded file. Nonetheless, we've got our footage imported into Fusion. Just check a few things, clip attributes, frame rate is 24. Because it's individual files, we have to set this to what we want. Um, I think it was recorded at 24. For this case, it doesn't really matter. It might have been 30. Um, the rest of this doesn't really matter. There's no audio associated with the file. And there's our footage. Before we do any tracking with this footage, we want to spend a little bit of time just watching it and getting an idea of what it looks like. There's a little over 32 seconds of, of footage here, and I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing just because, well, it's in, it doesn't really change much, and it's interesting to have a long enough track to make this process interesting. So if we go into full screen mode and just view the footage, a couple things to point out. Uh, there's a pair of mirrors on the closet in the background. These are going to be a problem for the tracker because they move in the opposite direction that would be expected in a track. There's also this piece of plastic in the lower corner here. This could be a problem. Um, it's not very reflective, so I don't know if these will show up strong to the tracker. Um, lastly, Jimmy himself, he's pretty motionless in this scene, but if you notice at one point, he does move his eyes, and so I'm going to want to remove his face from the consideration of the tracker, or we'll get some false hits on things that are happening in here. And this is it for this video. For the second video, I'm going to then get into masking off the parts of the scene that we need to for the camera tracker to work and implementing the camera track itself.